So let's continue solving examples on electric fields. Let's suppose an electron traveling with a constant velocity v0 enters a constant electric field given by E midway between two oppositely charged parallel plates as shown in a following diagram. So an electron is traveling with a constant velocity along the x-axis enters these two sections of our parallel plates from the left end, where this plate is the positively charged plate and this plate is the negatively charged plate. Now, if the plates are 5 centimeters long, the electric field is given to be 8,000 newtons per coulomb, and the initial velocity along the x-axis is 5 times 10 to the 6 meters per second, calculate the angle with which the electron will exit the plates. So, let's begin by looking at our diagram. So our electron initially enters the two plates with an initial velocity that points along the x-axis and it has no velocity that points along the y-axis. Now, as it travels from left to right, it gains a velocity along the y-axis and that's because the electric field which points downward creates a force which points upward and that force will create acceleration which in turn will create a velocity. So right before it exits our two plates it will have an x component velocity as well as a y component velocity. Now the x component velocity remains the same throughout our trip. It remains this quantity because our electron is not accelerating along the horizontal axis. But if we find this uh, Vy at the end of our trip, we can use the following trig function. So tangent of the angle theta that this triangle would make is equal to the height of the triangle Vy divided by the base Vx. So if we find what Vy is, we can solve for our angle. So let's look at the following steps that we will take to find our angle. So we first have to find our acceleration along the y-axis and we can use the second law of motion to find that. In part b we want to find how long it takes this electron to travel this 5 centimeter distance. Now in part 3 we want to find what our displacement is along the y-axis and then we want to use all this information to calculate what our vy is, what the velocity is along the y-axis right before it exits and then we can use that in this equation to calculate the angle. So let's begin in step 1. So we apply the second law of motion, the sum of the forces acting on the object on the electron along the y-axis is equal to the mass of it multiplied by its acceleration along the y-axis. So we know only one force is acting on this electron if we neglect the gravitational force. So that means the force becomes Q multiplied by E where E is our uniform electric field and Q is the charge of our electron and that is equal to the mass of the electron multiplied by Ay. So we solve for Ay and we see that Ay is equal to Q multiplied by E divided by M. So our Q for an electron is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Our electric field is 8,000 newtons per coulomb and our mass is 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. And we get about 1.41 times 10 to the 15 meters per second squared is the acceleration pointing upward along the y-axis. Now, let's move on to part 2 in which we want to calculate the time. So how exactly can we calculate the time? Well, we know the velocity of the electron during its pathway along the x-axis is constant. If we know our constant velocity and we know our distance along the x-axis, we can find the time. So we use the following kinematics equation and we can use it because our acceleration is constant. So, notice x is equal to x naught plus yx naught times t plus one half ax times 
t squared. Now, our ax is assumed to be zero, so this term becomes zero. And notice that our a, um, our x not initially, we choose to be zero. So this implies that x is equal to v naught multiplied by t. So we see that time is equal to x divided by v naught, and that is simply 0 0.05 meters divided by 5 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. And that gives us a time value of 1 times times 10 to negative 8 seconds. So that's how long it takes our electron to travel this horizontal distance. Now let's move on to part 3. In part 3 we want to find, we want to use this time value and the acceleration found in part A to calculate the vertical displacement change in y. So we use the following equation. So we bring our y naught to this side and that becomes change in y and notice our initial velocity along the y-axis is zero so this term becomes zero. And we have change in y is equal to one half multiplied by this, this should be a y, multiplied by the acceleration along the y-axis, multiplied by t squared. Now we know what t is, it's this quantity, and we know what a y is, it's this quantity. So we plug those in and we get a distance, a vertical distance, of 0 0.071 meters. So that's this distance here. This is how far our electron travels upward as it travels across. So, let's move on to part 4. In, in part 4, we essentially want to use all this result to calculate what our velocity is along the y-axis right before it exits. So we use the following kinematics equation. So our final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus 2 times our acceleration multiplied by our displacement. So this goes to 0 and we get the following equation. Our final velocity vy is equal to the square root of 2 times ay multiplied by change in y. So in part 1 we found our acceleration, we plug that in. And in part 3 we found our displacement, so we plug that in. And we get about 1.41 times 10 to the 7 meters per second is the velocity pointing upward along the y-axis right before it exits our two plates. Now, we can use this equation to calculate what the angle is. So we take the tangent inverse of the following ratio, vy to vx, where vy is 1.41 times 10 to the 7 meters per second, and vx is this quantity, 5 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. And we find our angle is about 70.5 degrees with respect to the x-axis, so this angle is 70.5 degrees.